So welcome everyone to the Joy of Green Builds running test smartly by Rajdeep Parma. Thank you, thank you, Sejal, and thanks everyone for joining me here today. Uh, <coughs> so before starting, uh, let's set some expectation right. So the topic today is the joy of green belt, and uh, I expect that uh, I, I assume that uh, uh, everyone who has joined here, like 40, 44 people now, uh, at some point in your life you have uh, written some automated test using, let's say, Selenium or APM or whatever tool you are using, and I also assume that you have run uh, those tests in your uh, CI server, and. Uh, also, I assume that when you have run them in your CI server, you have seen them failing. Yeah. And um, by failing, you mean, uh, you, I mean, you have seen the red bills. And then you have felt the pain of the red bills. Um, so, before jumping onto the slides, I just, just don't want to jump in because if I uh, see the slides, I won't be able to see the see you people in the chat window. So, uh, can you tell me the reasons why uh, a build goes red or why a test fails? Any one of you? Hello? Yeah, I think uh, I, I lost you people for a while. But yeah, can you can you tell me the reason why you see red builds or why the test fails? What could be top top reasons? I'm watching the discuss window. Yeah, so blur bug, flakiness due to app changes, un uninterrupted blocks, test data dependency, loading issue, flaky test, locators change, data network issue, load time, environment issue. Yeah, that's a good one. Timeout issue, flaky. Yeah. So I heard this one, this word flakiness a lot of uh, 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 here a lot. And then the network and environment issues as well. And uh, then I somewhere found the locators. Yeah. All right, that gives a, that gives a good uh, good data to me, and I think uh, you all you all uh, by your answers I can assume you all are well versed with uh, what a flaky test and how uh, what are the various reasons, various reasons for it. So obviously there are many reasons for red build. Major one is flaky change test due to change in um, uh, things like due to things like timeout, poor locator choices. Mm -hmm. I think this is uh, this is freezing a bit. Sorry, I I I froze. We are, able to, we are able to hear and see you properly, so no 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 worries about that. Okay, sorry, my window actually froze, so I thought. Uh, okay. It's okay. Not you if we are able to not see you. Okay. Yeah. So let's continue. Uh, so things like. Uh, timeout, poor locator choices, etc. And uh, these are valid points. So in this talk, I'm not going to talk about uh, them at all because there are uh, various other talks happening uh, on in other tracks, which uh, which uh, specifically targets uh, what to do when the test fails uh, for the reasons like uh, poor locators and uh, and uh, other flaky reasons, and they, they 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 will suggest you how to build robust locators and how to use implicit weights, and basically all the things that are in our boundary and that can be fixed. I will not talk about them. So what will I I'll talk about in this talk is mostly about what if test fails uh, for the reasons which are out of our control. Yeah, and uh, some of the reasons mentioned uh, by you people is uh, environment issues, right? Uh, infrastructure issues. So, what will we do in, if uh, such things happen? So, for example, what will happen if you are running a test and let's say yeah, the browser is crashed or the Android or iOS device you are running is uh, is has lost connection, uh, and how to avoid red builds in such cases? And that will be main uh, uh, part of this uh, this talk. Yeah. So, let's jump into slides. Hope you can. Uh, uh, see my slides. Uh, uh, maybe Sejal, can you quickly say yes or no? Uh, yes, Rajdeep. All yes. right, perfect. So uh, before jumping in, let's uh, refresh uh, some maths. So if I have a coin here, sorry, Rajdeep, please turn on your camera as well. Oh, sorry. That's weird. You can place it in right side 
uh, oh, okay. could go down and study. Yeah, yeah, I, I just yeah. Yeah. I completely got the easy. Good to go. Yeah. Okay. So if I have a coin and if I toss it, yeah, what is the probability that I'll get a tails on the top? Can someone tell me? It's very easy. Yeah. Yeah, 50%. Someone said 50%. That's uh, perfect. So the, 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 the way we reach to this is a coin has two sides, a tail and a head. And out of two, probability of getting any one occurrence is two out of one, which is 0 0.5 or in other words, 50%. Now let's take a slightly diff difficult one. What if I toss two coins together? What is the probability of me getting tails on uh, both the faces of both coins. Now this can be, uh, uh, again, the answer can be very similar. If I toss two coins together, there are four possibilities. Yeah, Two tails, two heads, one head, one tail, and one tail, one head. So the probability of getting two tails, which is uh, uh, out of four occurrence, it is one occurrence. So it is 4 out of 1, which is uh, 0 0.25. Yeah. In other words, uh, it can be, uh, so I asked you two coins. I can ask you what happens if I, uh, uh, sway, let's say, throw 10 coins, what will happen? So probability theory has a very good uh, rule for that. So probability, it says probability of uh, two independent events happening together is equal to multiplication of their individual probabilities. So if I toss one coin, individually getting tails is 0 0.5 and same is for another coin so if i toss them together the product rule says the probability will be 0 0.25 yeah so now let's apply it to our uh, uh, tests so imagine i got a test who it is 99% stable that means uh, it passed 99 times out of 100 runs and i got few more such tests you know let's say i've got total five tests and if i run all these five tests together what's the chances that i will uh, get a green bill as in all the tests will pass and using the product rule as i mentioned it will be 0 0.99 raised to 5 which will be 0 0.950 in other words 95 percent times you will get a green bill right which is uh, which is amazing However, you will never uh, live with five tests. Over the time, your test will grow from five to 50 to 500 to thousands. Yeah. And what will happen if your tests grow? Let's see what happens. So five tests, which uh, you will get 95% uh, green pills. For 50, it reduces to 60%. For 100, it reduces to 36%. What? If you have got test in the magnitude of let's say thousand or uh, two thousand, so if you have got fourteen hundred tests, you will get almost approximately zero green bills. And in percentage wise, it's sickness. And this person is me. <laughs> My name is uh, Rajdeep. And uh, I've been doing testing for more than 10 years now, or oh, actually 12 years. Uh, I am a contributor to some of the open source tools like uh, Calabash and APM. If you happen to use Espresso driver in APM, uh, you probably are using a lot of my code there. Um, and uh, I work at a company called uh, Bumble in UK. So currently I'm sitting at uh, at London, it's uh, seven o'clock in the morning here. Uh, at Bumble, we have got two main products, Badu and Bumble applications. Our mission is to offer most equitable, inclusive and empowering way to connect people. And we have users all around the world. And my responsibility at Bumble is to keep our tests fast and robust. And in this talk, I will share you the approach we follow to deliver this responsibility. Yeah. So uh, this is how the agenda of today will look like. So first we will talk about UI tests at Bumble and uh, main challenges with UI tests, which are speed and reliability. And uh, then I'll talk about parallel testing approaches. And then uh, we'll jump into uh, queues, worker and jobs. 
and the test failure segregation and taking the right decision. And at the end, I will show you a demonstration and then we'll have some time for question and answer. So at first, let's talk about UI test and uh, also the speed and reliability. So while the topic is joy of green builds, I'll actually talk about joy of quick, quick green builds. And I said how to get quick green builds. And the answer is delete all your tests. And that's it. That's the best way. And we all should do it. And with this advice, I conclude my talk. Thank you. Obviously, that I was kidding there. <laughs> don't uh, don't do it. Uh, you might uh, have to speak for 45 minutes. Yeah. And by the way, don't take my uh, advice seriously. You might you you get carried away and delete all your tests, and you you may get fired. So, and I I also don't take any responsibility of any such event. So, anyway, so. Again, talking about the challenges of speed and uh, reliability, we have got test pyramid and it tells us what to do. And uh, so this is the ideal test pyramid and it says what to do. And the expectation of our UI test is that they should be as less as possible. And uh, the reality actually in many cases is uh, different. And instead we get such pyramid, which is a garbage pyramid. Uh, and I call it garbage pyramid most of the time because uh, it's a full heap of it's a heap full of UI tests usually in projects. And our situation in Bumble is not very different. We have got uh, 1400 tests as of now. And as I showed you in the first slide, 1400 tests means almost zero probability of getting a green bill, even with the 99% stable tests. <laughs> So while I'm not particularly proud of our 1400 tests, there are various reasons for everything. Uh, there is legacy code, which was not in right design to write unit test. Uh, we just have started uh, introducing integration test uh, and uh, there's still a lot of work to be done there. So <clears throat> 1400 tests are a bit too much for UI layer, but they help us prevent bug. And uh, so for that very reason, we are not going to delete them anytime soon. We, we actually once thought of it, uh, so we didn't run for them for some time and we were like completely uh, helpless. So uh, we have to use them and they are very useful until we grow another layer, other layers of pyramid. But if we keep all these tests, uh, there are two major challenges which we deal with and they are uh, speed and reliability. And over the years, we have uh, uh, applied various approaches and various uh, tech, uh, tools and techniques to our uh, test automation. And ultimately, we have been able to manage uh, uh, something, uh, 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 some very comfortable matrices. So here are they. So our git push to test finished is approximately uh, 20 minutes. And our builds are frequently green. I'm not claiming that they're always green uh, because uh, uh, they, they are red, but frequently green means you can you can assume from probability of zero to still getting uh, uh, green builds uh, multiple times is a big achievement for us. And uh, when the builds are green, there's a sense of joy and there's a sense of confidence among our developers as well. And they actually go and look at uh, the test logs to see uh, if, if their code hasn't break, broken anything. So green build is very important for, for us in that sense. So here are uh, some tool sets which we use for uh, we, we do automation for web and mobile both for web we are using Selenium and for uh, mobile we are using uh, Calabash, APM and uh, we use Cucumber for BDD. Uh, actually we use it as a testing tool to be honest. Uh, we write scenarios and uh, it's a mechanism for us to run tests. Um, and then we use uh, Ruby as programming language and then on top of it, we have a, uh, our own uh, test runner, which is called Parallel Cucumber, which is a queue based uh, test distribution system, uh, which is uh, a bit more smarter and a bit more configurable than uh, traditional uh, test runners. Uh, a little bit about uh, comparison between web and mobile. Selenium tests are a bit faster and stable for us. And the reason is Selenium is more mature than APM. Selenium has uh, uh, probably less bugs than APM and Selenium has less variables in the chain. 
as compared to APM. So in, in case of Selenium, you have got, uh, let's say your client code and then Chrome driver and that's, that's it. In case of uh, APM, you got client code, which communicates to your uh, Node.js server, which communicates to JavaScript driver, which communicates to HTTP server running inside your uh, mobile device. So there are a lot of variables in the chain. So there is a lot of extra chance of uh, something going wrong in APM. And this chain also makes the uh, things a bit slower there. So that's why we have got more red builds in uh, or more test failures in the mobile platform, specifically let's say Android or iOS uh, than web. So in the in the examples I'll be showing you, I will talk mostly about uh, the mobile devices. Yeah. So let's get, get back to the point of uh, uh, speed and stability. And they both can be achieved using uh, parallel testing. Yeah? It's, uh, you might think that parallelization helps us achieve uh, uh, speed, but in, in fact, it also can be used to achieve a stability and we'll see how. So uh, four years ago, we started uh, uh, building our uh, Android farm. Um, with real devices and currently we are using our emulators form and uh, in one uh, build when, which is a 1400 test they run on uh, almost 200 emulators in parallel so uh, we have got a lot of uh, heavy linux machines and each machine has 32 emulators and they are at our disposal so there are a lot of uh, emulators available to us for one build so that's devices are not a problem there so with this in mind, uh, uh, I'll go continue with the further examples. Yeah. So what happened four years ago was we started simple division. Uh, so for example, let's say you got 15 tests and uh, you got three devices, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. You can divide these tests equally among uh, these devices. So five tests each. Now assume uh, this, that uh, Alpha got five long running test and Bravo got five uh, shortest running tests. What might happen is Bravo finishes first, after a few minutes Charlie finishes and then after a few minutes Alpha finish. And with this uh, what, what might happen is uh, there is waste of uh, Bravo's and Charlie's time here. Uh, this mechanism was achieved using a gem called Parallel Calabash which is now deprecated for good because there are better options uh, which we have developed now. So the advantages was uh, there was improvement in runtime. If one device becomes faulty, maximum five tests are lost. So it's better than losing all the tests on one uh, uh, in a single thread. So there's a stability component there a little bit. I would I would say not not something very exciting. However, the downside is waste of resources. Two devices are idle, and they if something someone has finished very quickly, that device will remain idle. And uh, that's that's very sad. And no green build because even if the five tests are failing, uh, there won't the green build will not be green. So even if one test fails, it's 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 called red. So how do we how we get uh, green build then? And the answer is very simple: rerun. I think almost uh, most of you have got lots of tests have uh, pulled pulled this out of your tool chain and you have have some point in your life said let's rerun and it magically uh, solves the problem of flaky tests yeah but is it is it something uh, as uh, helpful as it seems well sometimes yeah uh, you you get green builds because of it so uh, but is it is, is is it not problematic let's see so we run helps us getting green build however if you see from the performance speed uh, and the speed side of it, genuine failures are run twice. For example, if you have got a bug in application for which the test is failing, and if you are blindly just rerunning that failure, it will fail again definitely. And what you what might have what will happen is you are, you have run a test which had to fail anyway two times, which is uh, uh, not good. And if infrastructure is bad. There's no point in rerunning. So uh, some people say network issue. For example, let's say uh, there's a network issue going on uh, today. Some service is down and you are running all the tests. In our case, let's say we run 1400 tests. All of them will fail because of the network issue. And then uh, 
and we don't know when the network will be bad it's let's say it could be a flaky network right so let's say out of 1400 200 are failing and then we rerun then out of 200 100 more are failing so there's no point in running because 100 failures are a lot no one will go and check out those 100 failures if they are of the magnitude of five or six failures people are still okay to check it so there's no point in running rerunning sorry uh, if the infrastructure is bad uh but that's are these two only two problem with rerun it seems like not rerun has a bigger problem and a rerun swallows bugs how so for example imagine you got uh, a bug in your application which is a intermittent bug for example in android you got a crash which is intermittent not always reproducible uh and only in certain some circumstances it happens you run the test in the first run the it, application crashes and uh, let's say you just rerun it again and this time it passes because it's an intermittent thing what what and what happens is you have ended up swallowing a bug uh, which is which is left unreported which is even more dangerous than red bells uh so how to solve this problem the answer is uh, iteration 2 uh, which is workers and queues so just to explain what workers and queues are i'll give you an example here So imagine you have got six tests, and you can put them in the queue. So you can call it as a queue. It's very similar to you go to a supermarket, and then when you have to buy product, you stay in a queue to check out. And then there are uh, people who are doing billing uh, on the on 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 the counters, and these people can be called as workers. So as soon as a worker is free, he calls the next person for the check out. So this next person is like a test. So imagine this is a queue of six tests. and then there are three workers which is alpha browser charlie in our case they can be real devices or or browsers or or threads which run the test so alpha browser charlie are workers so what happens in a queue based system is um uh, each worker gets uh, gets to pop a test from the queue so they get one test each and after some time let's say browser finished the test and there's outcome the outcome is passed it gets new test and then that is also passed it gets new test let's say alpha finished the test alpha gets another one charlie in the meantime uh, finished its test alpha has outcome of the test as passing so it's like it's not a simple division the tests are popped from the queue on the need basis so this is queue mechanism and there are some popular uh, test distribution mechanism uh, So if you are using Java, there could be JUnit. Uh, for JUnit, there is Maven Sherpa plugin, which uh, which distributes the test in queue-based mechanism. For test ng, there is um, uh, there is out of the box support for parallel testing uh, using which internally uh, works in form of queues. And if you are using Java and APM, there is a tool called APM Test Distribution, which is uh, specifically for mobile, developed by. Uh, Sai and Srini, who who actually took a, con- a workshop yesterday, they might be available here in 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 this area. Uh, you might catch them if you are interested in this. Um. So even though these are here, uh, there is one uh, we we still don't use these tools because of a fundamental problem with uh, the way these uh, distribute the test and uh, and what happens in the queue based system is. Uh, it doesn't care what happens in the infrastructure queue queue and workers are independent of your test run so let's see a issue so you got six test three devices and one test each uh, one each device got a test let's say bravo test is finished it asks for a new test let's say test number 4 is executing and bravo got sick in the meantime yeah let's say it it has some memory full so test 4 will fail if test 4 fails it pops up a new test test 5 which also fails because bravo has full memory and the test has outcome which is failed as soon as there is outcome q doesn't knows about the outcome yeah it, it it says i gave a test there's outcome it failed or passed so it will give the new test and again uh, that will also definitely fail So what happening is Bravo is just swallowing all the tests and making them fail, and that's a very big problem with uh, with traditional uh, queue based systems which I uh, talked earlier. Eh? 
So instead, what we expect is, uh, let's say we have got uh, six tests here. By the way, the problem which I mentioned earlier is uh, this is not just a problem with Q; it's a problem in any case. Uh, let's say even if you do simple division, that's the that's the problem in any way, any case. Uh, the thing is, Q actually can help us solve this problem. How? Let's say we got six tests and uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie S3 device in here. And uh, so what happens is each of them got a test. And then Bravo test is finished. And then Bravo got a new test. And then uh, Bravo got sick. And if Bravo gets six, the test four fails, obviously. What we expect is test four should get back to the queue. And that's where we need a little bit smartness between uh, there, there should be some kind of communication between uh, our queue based uh, system and our tests. And I'll talk about that later in my demo as well. What should happen later on is uh, if we detect that Brow is sick, Brow should be taken out of the equation. It should be killed permanently so that it's not able to take more tests. And then we uh, let's say alpha finish the test. It gets a new test. And test on alpha is green, test on Charlie is also green, Charlie gets a new test, alpha gets a new test, and let's say both, both of them pass. Now, if you observe the picture here currently, all of the tests are green. What we lost is a device and which we killed, even though that happened, a test had failed, but because of uh, some smart mechanism which we can apply uh, this thinking, all of our tests are green. Basically, the build is green. Yeah, and I'll show you a quick demo of this in real time. So I'll skip, uh, exit my slides, uh, and yeah. So what I'm going to do here is I have a, I have a, a framework which has got three scenarios. I won't call them tests because they are actually not testing anything. They are just scenarios for demonstration purpose. Yeah. So these are uh, one, two and three scenarios. What they do is simply launch the application and type the name of a superhero character and then do a count from one to uh, ten. By the way, can uh, can someone from the uh, uh, organizer, organizers tell me if they can see my screen or not? I just want yes, to see your screen. Raj. Okay, per perfect. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so uh, we got uh, uh, three scenarios here, and we got three devices here. Yeah, and what I will do is uh, I will uh, run all these tests on these three devices initially. So these these are uh, Ruby tests, and uh, I run them using a rake. Rake, if you don't know, Rake is basically a build tool like Maven, but in Ruby, the, the, the counterpart is Rake. And the parallel is a task, which is like you can say Maven target. Or, so don't worry about what is this. The code will be shared. It's it's already on the GitHub. So when I run this bundle exec Rake parallel, so we start a Redis server, which is a basically a queue. Uh, Redis is a queue based database. And then we have got three workers which are pre-checked and the three workers you can see are assigned tests. Yeah. So the test should uh, start shortly. There's something uh, very slow about them. Give me a moment. Okay, there you go. It shouldn't be so slow. Maybe uh, it's maybe maybe because machine is overloaded right now. Yeah, indeed, it's just taking taking a lot of time to do things here. Yeah, so. Uh, 
you see here that uh, they are saying must pass, must pass. Now that you see Shaktiman here, yeah, I killed Shaktiman. So the test related to Shaktiman is uh, is kind of, I expect that it will fail. Yeah, and the Batman and uh, which was another one, probably Spider Man. Yeah, oh, sorry, the Batman and Hulk has passed, and I actually killed Shaktiman. Uh, Shaktiman is a superhero, which which was uh, doing his job, and I killed him. Yeah. And and I what I expect here is because uh, I, I I simulated a condition wherein uh, the the test was running and I actually killed the emulator and you see the test has actually restarted and got requeued and restarted on another emulator yeah so now let's do one more uh, uh, one more naughty thing here I killed this one also like let's our infrastructure is failing. Uh, flaky and I'm, I'm, what I'm simulating is let's say we lost the connection to emulator while the test was running before we had an outcome or maybe let's say this situation can be your device memory was full or let's say device uh, lost the Wi-Fi connection yeah there can be many many such reasons or let's say device cable was flaky it, it happens quite a lot in real device and what you see Shaktiman has reincarnated yeah it's a superhero which cannot be killed <laughs> So that's why it's my favorite character. Uh, so sorry to interrupt you, Rajni, but we have only uh, 10 minutes left. Yeah, that's fine. It's almost uh, done. So even after killing the device twice, you will see all my test has passed. So you see past test three, right? In reality, if you see the test has run five, three tests has actually, there were five runs uh, on worker zero, the test failed one time and uh, on worker two, it failed one time again. So it was failed, got re again failed, got re Yeah. So what it shows is uh, we can avoid, uh, this build could have gone red, but because of uh, our smart Q based system, it became green. So the way it happens is, sorry. So the way it happens is all the devices which we have here actually go to a health check, which is a custom script, uh, which checks whether the device has enough memory, has got internet connection, has got uh, reachability and a lot of things. It can be uh, written by the person who is using this. It, it's provided in form of a hook. And if the worker is healthy, it requeues the, dequeues the, the test and runs the test. And test can have two outcomes, pass or fail. If the test is passed, the pass thing is uh, reported and we go back for the health check. If health check passes, we re we uh, take another test, and if it passes, we follow this loop. However, if the test fails, we check if it is failing because of some infrastructure issue or some third party flaky issue. So we have to do reason segregation there. If it, for example, doesn't fail with any such reason, then we go back to the health check, take another test. If it fails, we take another test fails, we take another test as usual. But if it fails because of a faulty device, then our uh, uh, test framework has a mechanism to communicate to the health check script or health check mechanism some way that, hey, I failed and I doubt it's because of the device being uh, not reachable. In that case, what happens is next time the health check will make the worker unhealthy. And if there's an unhealthy worker, it will kill the worker basically kill that, detect that device out of equation. So the flow will be something like this and this. Yeah. Let's move on. So all these things are uh, then uh, implemented in uh, parallel cucumber, which uh, which we actively maintain here at Bumble. Uh, so after uh, uh, we switch to such a system, there's basically massive improvement in runtime and if a worker becomes faulty, it's killed and test is written back to queue. No queue, no requeue of genuine failures. Uh, so we detect that the test is failing because of a valid reason, we don't requeue it. And no waste of healthy resources because all tests almost finish at the same time and we get lots of green builds. How this happens is based on uh, 
uh, as I told, there's a communication between test framework and uh, between our uh, queue based uh, system. And that happens using some hooks. And these hooks are uh, like before workers and uh, I'll talk one by one. So before workers hook, we can have a logic related to sorting of the test. So we can sort longest running test to shortest running uh, in the order. And if we then run the test, we target all the worker to finish at, the, uh, at around the same time. And also, if we want to repeat one test multiple times, we can put that multiple times in the queue. And that will uh, uh, that will basically mean that same test runs on all the workers. And uh, we, we can analyze flaky tests using such mechanism. Then worker health check, which I told is a custom script, can be provided by the user by, or by the test framework to parallel uh, to the queue mechanism. Uh, it can be anything. We can write the custom code there. And then the job gets executed, a test runs, and then after job, we decide further actions, what to do with the test, whether we want to do EQ or not, or what else we want to do. And on the failure action, we can do lots of things. For example, it's a flaky test, we can possibly re it. Or if it's a business failure, we should not re it. That's why possible. And the, if the flaky app is there, we should not re it ever. And if there's a flaky infrastructure, we should re the test, perhaps multiple times. As I showed you in my example, I, the test was re two times. And to do this, uh, we need to know what was the reason for the flakiness. And for that, we need to have a reason segregation mechanism. And that reason needs to be communicated back to our uh, smart test runner. Uh, and that can be done in this way. Well, usually what we do is if, uh, let's say, we have a method called install app, which does uh, ADV install on the, on the device. I'm talking about Android for iOS, can be say iOS sim kettle. So uh, if the fails, if this step fails, it usually raises runtime error, standard error, uh, which are the part of uh, core libraries. However, what we should do is, uh, for example, let's say install app, and if the result include something like install failed insufficient storage, we should raise a custom exception, say device storage error. And this custom exception can be something like a uh, child of infra error, which is, in, is also a custom error, and then which can inherit from runtime error, which is uh, inbuilt exception. And the advantage of doing this is uh, exception can be a good way, to, uh, good way of communication. How? In the after job, we can uh, check what was the exception for which the scenario failed. So if it's a business reason, we can say, okay, uh, it's a final failure. We want to re it. And also we can report the result to QA devs or, or in some dashboard. Let's say if it is a third party service error, we can detect it. Uh, let's say if third party is down, it, it can give us a specific uh, reason of failure and we can raise third party exception. And then based on that exception, we can decide, oh, uh, this third party is down. We can report the results to Slack uh, also can report in the Kibana to check how much flaky is it over the time so that we can present this data to those third party developers to tell them how uh, buggy their service is. And then we can, we can recue the scenario. And this is the device storage error which we spoke earlier. If we see such an error, we have to mark device as sick so that it's taken out of our ecosystem and then we can recue the test. Yeah. So, uh, in summarize, there are some uh, characteristics of smart queue based test distribution and they are uh, rerunning infra failure only and if you want to run business failure, only conditionally run them. And then it should have worker health check. So this is if you are going to design something on your own in, in language which you are using, uh, then these are the things which you, you need to take in mind. And for worker health check is very important before a, each, uh, each uh, job. And the setup tear down worker hook it's needed for things like if you want to set up APM or start APM in before uh, before uh, running your test, then the setup is needed. And also there should be a facility to terminate build if failures exit, uh, exceeds threshold. So in our case, when we run 1400 tests, if there are more than let's say uh, uh, 40 or 50 failures, we terminate the build right then and there because uh, that's a significant number of failures uh, to handle. So, so that we don't waste waste time of running all the tests. And then sorting tests test by weight is something very important because if you start running the longest running test first 
and then shortest then you aim to finish all the workers almost at the same time so that this is more optimization to resource utilization repeat a single test multiple time obviously to find if the test is flaky or not and then the backup workers what might happen is let's say you have less test only three tests and you got 100 workers what might happen is these three tests might just run it run and uh, let's say all the three workers on which they are running are faulty and these tests three tests may just not uh, not pass so in, there should be some mechanism that they may go to another workers uh, so there should be some backup workers from uh, from the workers which you have started uh, that's uh, another optimization so yeah that's uh, pretty much it from my side uh, thank you very much and uh, these are some uh, links uh, which i have uh, these are the links to the repository and uh, the parallel cucumber repository and my demo repository you can clone them if you want and uh, yeah if you have any questions you can ask me thank you very much Can you can you hear me? Yes, Rajdi, we can hear okay. you. So we have a few questions, and uh, can you see it in the Q and A tab? Q and A. In the we have to click on the discuss button. Yes, yes, I saw it. So let's take it. Uh, uninterrupted blocks data change. Okay. Okay, what parameters uh, define a sick device? A sick device can be defined on the parameters, uh, as I said. Let's say uh, you detect that the package manager of a device is not responding for Android. Yeah. Um, uh, so what will you say is like, even though device is visible in ADB devices, but the package manager is not responding, we can call it sick. It's up to you how you want to call a device sick. Let's say if a memory is full or the battery percentage is uh, down, uh, then you can you can define it as a sick sick device. It's a custom thing you you can uh, you can uh, you can check. Uh, so another example could be for example it's not a device it's a it's a machine uh, running browser in a web driver. Why that happens quite often to us. What happens is the that machine in which we have our uh, web driver uh, uh, sorry, sorry browsers running sometimes the machine is gets down while running the test. What happens to the test which we're running the, during that time on that machine is they come back to us failing and the reason usually they communicate as uh, we could not communicate to a uh, browser. And then we detect, okay, if some test was not able to communicate to the browser, we can call it as a sick uh, device or sick browser. And then those tests get weak. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining me today.